Islamic to me um, was, uh, it's, it's more than just a religion, it's really who you are. That is, in Islamic, it's in, it's in your blood. Having the war and now all the struggles that we had back home, so it brought like um, a question, is this all about, is this what life is all about? So I wasn't really satisfied, so I wanted to know who God really was. I don't think I'm finding God, and I'm not finding myself, and that's not heaven I thought I really wanted. So I decided to go ahead and end my life. اهلا وسهلا بكم اعزائي المشاهدين في برنامج رحله مسلم الى الرجاء hello and welcome to our program a muslim journey to hope my name is muhammad saeed from my earliest days i was raised in the islamic culture and was brought up in a muslim family but through a series of wonderful events my life has taken a different turn i've come to know jesus christ Isa al-Masih as my Lord and Savior and it is my hope that each and every one of you will know and accept him too we are here to bring you true stories and moving testimonies from many people just like me former Muslims who've experienced the life-changing power of Jesus Christ believe me it is real and it is the truth You'll be introduced to people from around the world who once believed in Muhammad and only in Islam. But today they speak boldly of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and they want to share his love with others. Let's meet Layla, a woman from the Middle East who was raised as a Muslim and knew that if she sinned, she would have a consequence of fire. But then she discovered the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here is Layla's story. Islamic to me um, was, uh, it's, it's more than just a religion. It's really who you are that that is in islamic is in, in your blood this is just like you breathe the air you're a muslim this is who you are you know um so to me i was a muslim who believed in muhammad and god was a god on the throne uh, he was not a father uh, he was not a friend he was a judge and he was gonna weigh my goods and bags at the end and I was going to have to meet him um, and I knew growing up as a Muslim um, that no matter how good as a Muslim I was I'm going to have to uh, somewhat uh, have a consequence of fire I grew up in, uh, in childhood, young childhood, in a Muslim neighborhood, but in an older childhood, near teens, I was actually in a Christian neighborhood. And we used to go and visit the, the American missionaries, and they were called the Protestant missionaries. And we used to go play and hear stories and have fun. So I believe somebody laid their hands on me there. Um, another thing, um, I know, like I said, God called me by name. So he's already was planning for me the passage and then having the war and now all the struggles that we had back home. So it brought like um, a question, is this all about, is this what life is all about? 
so I wasn't really satisfied. So I wanted to know who God really was. And my first idea was for me to get to know Christians, Judaism, and Islamic, and I'm going to pick what I like from it. You know, so that was just the beginning of where God was probably putting a question mark in me, you know, and I'm sure he was calling me, you know, and, but I wasn't there yet. I wasn't hearing him clear. God kept bringing Christian devout people to be my friends and we would argue about Christ and about Muhammad and all these things. And then I decided, you know what, I don't think I'm finding God and I'm not finding myself and that's not heaven I thought I really wanted. So I decided to go ahead and end my life. I tried to take some sleeping pills and I decided I'll just sleep and wake up. And in the middle of it, when I started going through withdrawals, I realized, hey, I don't think I want that either. I want to live. So I, I believe that's when God has really brought me to the bottom, to the end of myself. And my best friend, who's my husband now, was my neighbor. And I went and confided in him and told him I did. And that was the change that it brought Lots of cries, lots of questions after I went to the hospital. And a year later, uh, I was listening to uh, Billy Graham Crusades. And they said, would you like uh, any spiritual you know, support? Call this number. So um, my best friend said, oh, how about you go and try that and call? So, well, yeah, why not? So I called and they said, well, would you like to accept the Jesus in your house? I thought, well, Jesus in Islamic, he's a prophet, he's a good guy, he's not bad. So, yeah, I accept him in my heart. To me, it, it wasn't a, a physical thing, like in Christianity, when you accept him in your heart, the Holy Spirit moves in. See, as a Muslim, I thought he's a good guy. Yeah, I'll accept him in my heart. I'm sure I like him. So they prayed with me on the phone, and my best friend got so excited. Oh, you're a Christian now. I was like, what? I'm not a Christian. And it took me two weeks. I had to cry. I had to um, wonder, what am I doing? Because I did not know that was a decision I was making. Because how could you change something that's in your blood? You have to take all your blood, put your new blood in. I mean... You're Muslim. How could you change that Islamic? I mean, this is you. How could you change? So, um, after talking and arguing with my friend, I said, you know, God, if that is really you, they say you are a son of God. They say you're a Holy Spirit. They say you are a father on the throne. I don't see you as a father. I don't see you as a son of God. I don't even see you as a Holy Spirit. But if that is really you, they say, that is you. I believe you made the earth. I believe you made the whole world. I believe you can do the impossible. If that is really you, then would you please show yourself to me? So I heard this voice in my head and wait and see. So I thought, you know what? This is only a decision. I can wait and see. I, if he didn't, if he does not prove himself to me, then I'll just go back to my own. So the Lord starts speaking to me in my dreams, but um, it's amazing. The Lord really does speak to you if you trust in Him, if you open your heart and say, God, just speak to me because He is a living being. He is there. He's everywhere. There is nothing can contain God. So God is right now, right now, here. So the Lord starts speaking to me uh, in dreams and in visions. So that's where my new journey as a believer. And here I am. Every day he amazes me. And he has transformed me in such a way that I am completely different. And now I know what it means to call God Father. It's very hard sometimes. He really is a father. He speaks to me. He walks with me. Um, he calls me.
becoming his own, and that is awesome. That is awesome. What a freedom, you know, when you're able. Uh, a God of love is not a God of, like, uh, weakness. Actually, when, you're, when he is a God of love and gives you that kind of unconditional love, it's a freedom. You're not entrapped in hatred, and you're not... Um, you're very free, you're powerful, you're strong. You're overcoming when he says, love your enemies. That is not something you know you do as a, a Muslim. Tooth for tooth and eye for eye, you know, you don't love your enemies. So, um, for me to love my enemies, this really is a humbling thing. Reminds me who actually loves me the most is Jesus. I believe that when you're not with Christ, you're dead. You cannot get yourself alive. But God Almighty, He made us in His image. And even Satanic people who worship Satan himself, they tell you there is somewhere deep in our spirit a place only God can fill. And when that place is still empty, God somehow, He always gives us the power, even when we're dead, to call our Father. The minute we call Him, and then darkness goes away. If you truly ask these questions and you ask God, okay God, are you real? Are you the one that they say you are a father? They call you? They call you um, Jesus, Son of God? How could Jesus be God too? Holy Spirit, if you really ask Him, He will reveal Himself to you. Because He can do it. We put God all the way. We put Him on the throne. But He is, He is with us. He sees the good, he sees the bad. And he hears us and the preacher say, Shame, reveal yourself to me. He will, but you have to have it. A heart who really wants to see. And I really believe there are no secrets about coming to Christ. Um, they're not, you have to be strong or you have to do this or you have to do that. Just open your eyes and heart and mind and say, okay, God, show me. I really believe He will. Um, and He will show you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the answer. There is these people who are coming from the Islamic background. God meant for us to be there, to eat with the people, to have the love and the compassion. I love the Muslim nation. I love them so much that my heart aches for them. I dream ministering to them all the time. I mean, if anything I can tell the Muslim nation, I just say, I love you so much. And if it means I would lose my life to save one of you, I would. My life is already paid by Jesus. So if I were to lose my life to save one, only one, it would be worth it. Because then I'll take one more to heaven. Do you feel the consequence of fire? What is Islam to you? Is it really who you are? Is it more than a religion to you? Like Laila, I was taught that anyone who does not accept Islam as their religion is an infidel, kafir, haram. Is this really true, I ask? How can we believe that Allah would say such things? In Surah Al-Imran, Ayah 85, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ He who accepts another religion other than Islam will not be accepted and he will be deemed with the lost. 
she truly asks this question to me as father to God. Are you real? Are you the one that they say you are a father? They call you. They call you uh, Jesus, son of God. How could Jesus be God too? Holy Spirit, if you really ask him, he will reveal himself to you. Because he can do it. We put God all the way. We put him on the throne. But he is, he is with us. He sees the good, he sees the bad, and he hears us, and the preacher says, Shine, reveal yourself to me. He will, but you have to have it. A heart who really wants to see. And I really believe there are no secrets about coming to Christ. Um, they're not, you have to be strong, or you have to do this, or you have to do that. Just open your eyes and heart and mind and say, okay, God, show me. I really believe He will. Um, and He will show you that Jesus is the one, the truth and the light. He is the answer. There is these people who are coming from the Islamic background. God meant for us to be there, to eat with the people, to have the love and the compassion. I love the Muslim nation. I love them so much that my heart aches for them. I dream ministering to them all the time. I mean, if anything I can tell the Muslim nation, I just say, I love you so much. And if it means I would lose my life to save one of you, I would. My life is already paid by Jesus. So if I were to lose my life to save one, only one, it would be worth it. Because then I'll take one more to heaven. Do you feel the consequence of fire? What is Islam to you? Is it really who you are? Is it more than a religion to you? Like Laila, I was taught that anyone who does not accept Islam as their religion is an infidel, kafir, haram. Is this really true, I ask? How can we believe that Allah would say such things? In Surah Al-Imran, Ayah 85, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ He who accepts another religion other than Islam will not be accepted and he will be deemed with the lost. Are you going to wait until God brings you to your end, to the bottom like Layla? I hope not. Did you ever ask God if he is really there to transform you, to call him Father? It is real. He does want you to call him Father. He is truly the God of love, not of anger, not the God of the sword and wars. He is the God of peace. You may wonder and ask, how can I call God Father? How faith in Christ changes, transforms a person's heart, mind, and soul like Layla. Let me tell you, this can only happen through Jesus who is able to give you spiritual fulfillment like you've never had. This fulfillment gives you freedom of conscience, freedom from sin, and changes lives. I struggled for one. I struggled much with this and was seeking for spiritual fulfillment for years. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Let's see how this can happen 
and how spiritual fulfillment can be reflected in a person's life. In my personal life, the process began when I started shifting my life from being self-centered to becoming God-centered. This can only happen when we put our total trust in God and accept that He is in total control. In order to get spiritual fulfillment, we must practice and live our faith in Christ, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Once we do so, this will reflect on our lives and others will notice changes in us. What are these changes? I have experienced them through Jesus. Are they for you? Let's take a look at the changes that the Lord promises to bring to the life that is surrendered to Him. Handling of sins. God's nature is holy and He cannot see sin. He implants in us distinct ability to recognize our human sinful nature and in turn helps us to show self-control, to be able to hate and resist sin. John chapter 16 verse 8, He will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness. Romans chapter 6 verse 14, for sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. Contentment. God gives us the ability to resist greed and temptation of the material world, as well as personal pleasure and all kinds of worldly temptations. James chapter 1, verse 12 Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Displacement of fear. With the help of the Holy Spirit and the love of God, we gain confidence and strength to withstand and resist fear, spiritual warfare, discouragement, and despair. This is the strength of hope and assurance. Psalms chapter 27 verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 1 John chapter 4 verse 18. Perfect love drives away fear. Applying divine love. We show understanding of God's love and the need for us to love others. How can we show this? Loving our enemies, Luke chapter 6, verse 27. But I tell you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. To place the interest of others before our own, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. Nobody should seek his own, but the good of others. Laying our lives for others. John chapter 15, verse 12 to 13. My commandment is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Expressing maturity. God gives us the ability to live and show godly manners, conduct, and attributes which can be reflected as follows. To be able to reflect the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. I can go on and on, but you may say, well, this sounds good, but it's too difficult to live. 
and I say to you, I agree, but nothing is too difficult with God. Only if you believe in Him, put your trust in Him as your Lord and Savior. Trusting the Lord significantly changes our outlook to life and helps us develop a positive attitude to life with humility. All in all, through Christ our Lord, we can do all things through faith, hope, and love, as long as we place our total trust in Him, confess He is Lord, the Lord of all. Layla's life, my life, and the lives of many were changed through Jesus, and your life could be changed too. He will accept you as you are, as He made me accept others, the way they are rather than look at them as inferior. He changes us and gives us the ability to love others with compassion as he does. You may ask why? The answer is because it is God's calling to spread the good news. The word of God in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. Go and make disciples of all nations, and this includes Muslims. God loves Muslims, and his desire is that none shall perish in hell. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. He changed me, and now I want to share the good news with you, my Muslim brothers and sisters, that you too may have the fulfillment of life, the joy, and peace. Muslims are not the enemies of Christians, but rather the victims of false knowledge of God's person, principles, and His true will for humanity. Muslims are good people who love God, and have the zeal for him, but are struggling outside the door to his presence and blessings because they have been denied the knowledge of knowing the truth. God truly changed me and revealed his truth to me. And now I can call him my Heavenly Father. He can and wants to reveal it to you too. There are 1.6 billion Muslims around the world. I am reaching out to you right now and pray that you will receive the good news and know the truth. In Romans chapter 10 verses 14 and 15. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? And it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. No one can save you. Religion does not take you to heaven, does not take you to God, not your father, not your mother, nor your good works. Only Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If you'd like to accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, into your heart, and into your mind and soul, just take a moment to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and that I need a savior. You are the savior of the entire world. Come into my heart and cleanse me from my sins and fill me with the Holy Spirit. I need you to be the master of my life. I know that you are the son of God and I ask you to come into my life. Say this simple prayer of faith so that you can walk with Jesus Christ in a new life, a new joy, a new hope, and a new peace. He will reveal himself to you. Just pray this simple prayer, and he will. We would like to encourage you 
in your decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or if you still have questions, please feel free to log on to our website. We will have materials in both English and Arabic that will answer some of your questions about coming to the Lord. If you made that decision today, you will find some literature that will encourage you in your walk, books, other testimonies, basic questions and answers about the Christian faith. You can also email us any questions, thoughts or concerns that you may have. So please just log on to our website at www.muslimjourneytohope.com. We hope and pray that this will encourage you in your new walk in Christ. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope that you will join us again next time. May God be with you and bless you. Let us pray for you, your family, and friends, and all of our viewers. Ya Rab, Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you from all of my heart, and I stand here before you, Lord, that your will will be done in the millions and the 1.6 billion people of Muslims that they may come to know you and experience the joy and the peace that's beyond understanding, that is life changing, that they may spend eternity with you, that I may see all of them with me in eternity according to your word and according to your promise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you.